SACS now supports execution of analyses from the command line using the SACS analysis engine. This feature can also be used to run analyses with scripts written in a variety of languages. Let's take a look at a few examples. I'll be using examples provided with the SACS installation. Here I have the input for demo 14 in the SACS installation. First of off, I'm going to open up the command line and I'm going to input a command. I've got the command copied here just so I don't have to type everything out, but we'll walk through each input right here. So the first input is the path to the analysis engine. That's the executable that works in place of the SACS executive. The second input is the path to the run file that we're interested in running. So in this example, we're going to be running this demo14.runx file. And the third input is the path to the SAX installation. In this case, I'm using SAX 13 edition. If I run that analysis, you'll see a SAX analysis engine window pop up. And the analysis runs. Now, this is going to run this analysis just once. So we're going to output all this information here. And we can see that he's available here. So this is a simple way to run this type of analysis. But if we want to get a little bit more uh, complicated and say implement something that requires some additional pre-processing or post-processing, or even looping over this analysis, we can do that using a scripting language. I'm going to open up this Python file. This is a scripting language that I've installed on my computer. And here you can see this is an input file for Python. Now, I'm not going to cover everything about Python in this video, but I'll walk through a few of the bits and pieces that are relevant to what we're talking about. So in this particular example, we've created some variables that point to the path and then also some additional variables that define the relative paths for the analysis engine, the run file, and, uh, and so forth. Uh, we also have some paths for some of the output. Uh, in this example, we are going to do a redesign of one of the elements uh, by running the analysis multiple times, checking the output database for the unity check values, and then increasing the thickness of the member until the unity check is satisfied. So the run stacks function here runs a sub-process, which is just a way to run that command line parameter uh, using the engine path, the run file path, and the default sax directory, which are defined by these variables. The read member results is going to be reading out of the sax database using a SQLite uh, module in Python to read out the, the information. The uh, get group for member is going through the input file and reading all of the input file lines for the groups. Uh, the modify group is going to update those groups and the modify input file is also going to be updating the file. And here at the very uh, bottom of this is the actual guts of the program which calls all of these functions. So I'm going to run that right here real quickly for you. So here, it's executing this program, and we're going to see the analysis engine is going to be called multiple times throughout this analysis. So we've iterated once, this is the second time, and this is going to continue until the criteria that's set in the scripting file has been satisfied. I believe it's going to be one or two more times until that is 
completed. Here you can see that the analysis is completed because our cursor is now available to us again. So I'm going to go in real quickly and compare the original input to the final input file. And you can see right here that this group TO2 has been modified. It's, we've increased the thickness from 0 0.125 to 1. This is a little bit different from the built-in redesign po process that's in SACS, which only uh, will update the size of the member based upon the one solution. This will go through and run it every time to reevaluate the stiffness solution. So it's a little bit different way of doing things. And this is simply just an example of how to interact with this batch processing tool. There are many other ways that you can use this, and it's really limited to your uh, capabilities and, and programming and ideas. So for more information, you can check out the links below in the description. And remember to subscribe to get more videos like this. Thank you.